Okay, so you're probably wondering why there's two different versions of the same exact video uploaded back to back. And the reason for that is um, the first uh, edition, which is actually uploaded, this this will be this video. Um, I didn't know really, I didn't think I could talk for 40 minutes about what I was doing because it was a pretty simple thing. I literally took a guitar I found in the garbage and that worked and uh, a Wii guitar that was bought at Savers, which is like a Goodwill, you know, um, thrift store. Um, and I just kind of took, I took both of them and made one really good guitar out of it. That was the most, you know, it's, it's still in rough shape, but it's the, the most, um, presentable of the two. And, uh, so I figured I would do like a story time slash rambles, you know, and, uh, it got pretty personal right off the bat. Uh, it got very emotional and I was very open about um, my life and, and the, the thing I've been through in the last year and a half plus the last 16 years of my modding career. I was a little all over the place, but I tried to keep it, you know, in order. I started off talking about the last year and a half, then I skipped back to when I first started modding guitars, um, and then I kind of round it right back to, to present day. Um, but I just, I felt that for some people it may be a little much, um, or maybe they just don't want to hear me, you know, get all emotional and cry or... Or, you know, they just want to watch me building a guitar and, and working on guitars without having me talk about that kind of stuff. So there's the music version, which is just 40 minutes of, like, just, you know, me working with music. And then there's this version where it's, you know, for, for I get real, you know, and, and I don't usually do that. I usually keep it very light and playful and happy. So I just wanted to do this little opening disclaimer thing. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, either way, hopefully you watch it. If not, you can check out my next video, which is me testing the guitar. So I, I got, I did this thing like last, um, at the beginning of the year, I want to say like April or whatever. I mean, I still had my hair and I was wearing hats and stuff all the time, trying to cover up my bald spot. And since I just went for shaving my head off. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I did that then. And then I recorded both gaming and testing the guitar and I lost the gaming footage, so I just had the testing the guitar part. So today, this morning, I spent about an hour going through and retesting it and getting some footage. Um, so I got a handful of FCs and, and just, you know, songs that I like to play. Um, and then a couple, I did, uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name, but Ying Wee or Ying Me Malsteam. Um, I did all three of his rock band DLC at the end of it, which I did pretty good for being a rock band guitar. Uh... But yeah, you know, um, if you don't decide to watch this one and you want to watch the music version instead, just in case, whatever, that's totally fine. Um, I do want to say that I appreciate you guys a lot. Uh, it's been a really fun year. And as much as I'm getting emotional now, I'm very happy. And I hope that shows. I hope that, like, it shows that I have a lot of energy and I'm very happy. And, and um, I've just been in a really great mood. So uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you so much. So before we tear this apart, I want to just go around it and show the differences, like start to finish. I will show the the other guitar once it has the 360 parts in it. I won't do it before. So you see here, there's just a lot of grime, junk, a lot of that all over this thing. Like somebody spilled a beer or like a soda on it. The strum bar is just, I don't want to even put my finger on it. So here, I got to... Look at this. It's all fixable. I mean, it's not like it's that bad, but it's pretty disgusting. And because I have the other guitar to swap, we're going to. I think I mentioned the duct tape that was holding the batteries in. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. If you ever lose your battery cover in a guitar, don't tape it. Just put the batteries in it, and you should be good. Or, at the very least, go on eBay. People 3D print new ones. That's how easy that was. Just buy a whole nother guitar for $6. Or $4. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, here we go. So, in typical fashion, I'm just gonna do this live voiceover. Um, since I really can't talk about an awful too much, I'm gonna be like a little bit of a story time here and I'll tell you about my last you know year and a half or so of life and 
what's been going on with me and whatnot, and just, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a chat about it, I guess, or more or less I'll talk about it. And then I'll chime in here or there with uh, specifics, you know, what I'm doing or whatever. So obviously first here I'm taking the guitar apart. Um, this is the one that I found in the garbage for 360. As you can tell, it is just seen better days. It is not only disgusting, um, it had like tape all over it, but look at this, look how scratched this back is. It's, it's beyond ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I do that for a while and then I just, basically the steps are you take the entire thing apart, you pull the guts out, you salvage what you can, like the, the start, s select, or back button, um, like the guide button and, um, connect pad, like there's a little silver part on the top there. Um, yeah, so, in, uh, May of 2012, uh, my wife and myself separated, and, uh, you know, it's been like, yeah, just over a year and a half now, and, um, when, uh, we first separated, we had decided that the kids would go with her because I had worked a day job and she works from home, and, um, so I had a lot of free time on my hands, and I was obviously very depressed and sad about it, and, Usually my depression turns into this whole game of like, let's just do nothing. Let's sit around and smoke some weed about it and just be, you know, sad and depressed and, and not fix it. Um, but this this time was a little bit different because it's a different type of hurt when um, you're married. I was married for four years and I was with her for about 14 on and off here and there since we were 14 years old. So it was a very long time, you know, and it was obviously heartbreaking, but... I figured that if I don't do anything, it's just going to be like, you know, the worst ever. So instead, I uh, started hanging out in my garage more, and I started working on guitars like crazy. Um, I built a, a Flying V. I, I bought a third-party Flying V, and I uh, wanted to convert that. I started finishing some older guitars that I worked on. I did a couple commissions. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, I just, I figured that the the healing um, had to be through that. Now, that didn't happen right away. Um, it was, like, you know, right before summer, and I was focusing a lot of my time on the kids when she had first left, because we were still, like, on good terms. We were just separated. So I was spending, like, almost every day over at an apartment that she was staying at with a, a friend of hers, and I was seeing my kids on constantly and everything. Um, and then she, she met somebody and that kind of slowed down a little bit, which is understandable. I mean, as, as life happens, um, she had to do her own thing, which, you know, more power to her, no hard feelings there. And, uh, she also moved about an hour away once she got her stuff situated. Um, so that put a damper on that. But then I had the kids every single weekend and I was working, you know, 40 plus hours a week at my job doing, um, automation machine building. So I was able to keep myself pretty occupied, and any, if I didn't have the kids or I was, you know, not working at late at night or after work, I would just ride my bike around. I remember last summer was probably the most I've ridden my bike in, um, probably like 10 years now. Like, I have I bought a brand new bike right before she had left. I bought my oldest kid a really nice bike, um, that's, you know, that March of 20, uh, 2021, and, um... So me and him would ride, I would just ride by myself, and it was such a great relief, and also, um, the release rather, and also Beartooth, which some may know is like literally my favorite band of all time next to Hollywood Undead, uh, they came out with, uh, a new album last summer, and, uh, so I just basically listened to that every day on repeat, and, uh, it, it got me through a lot. So the summer was pretty good. I, I spent a lot with my kids, you know, like I said, working and, and doing that. I did do some stuff out in the garage, but not really guitar work. You know, I played a lot because I've had this arcade cabinet that I've built uh, a few years ago when the pandemic first hit. Well, I guess a couple years ago now. But when the pandemic first hit, I got uh, my first round of stimulus check. And because me and my wife were both working at the time, um, the, my wife at the time, we were both working, uh... I decided to spend like 650 bucks, and I built my own Guitar Hero arcade cabinet. Now, it has since kind of evolved into just, I mean, it's like kind of an arcade cabinet. It's more of just like a giant um, cabinet with a big TV in it, and I have my computer and 360 installed into it. So I play any games. I watch movies and stuff when I'm working. It, it's what I edit all my videos on out in the garage. It's just, it's nice to have like a whole setup that's kind of contained. Um, I hang all my guitars, like my personal guitars on it. 
I put a really nice stereo system in it. So I, I just, you know, one day I'll do like a walkthrough of, of all that. Um, but you know, I, so I spent a lot of time just kind of just hanging out and, and doing that. I reconnected with one of my old friends that I met when I was uh, 14 as well. And me and her just talked every single day. And I mean, probably not at first. We talked, you know, maybe like, hey, what's up every day? And um, then she had some unfortunate stuff happen in her life. And then we became very close friends. Like, now we're like the bestest of friends. Which was really great for my healing. Um, and uh, I may sound like I'm getting choked up here. Because I am. Because it's, it's been a while since I've been to therapy. But I don't want to make this a somber thing. This is a very happy story, you know. Like, it's a, it's got a really great outcome. So, uh, when summer was over, it started getting really cold out, and I get seasonal depression like a mother, like it just, it gets really hardcore. So that's when I started, um, sinking a lot of money into, it was like right at the tail end of summer to beginning of fall, I started sinking a lot of money into Guitar Hero and Rock Band stuff, like, I bought, um, like four Raftnet adapters, I bought over 20 guitars, um, I bought three Rock Band 4 Jaguars, which if you know <laughs> that they're not cheap... I paid um, over 200 bucks for two of them, and I paid like 130 for another that was quote-unquote broken, and I was able to fix it up in a jiffy, um, and I did some work here and there, you know, I posted some videos on YouTube, and, you know, I've been on YouTube since 2006, and I figured, uh, why not actually start being a little bit more consistent with my, my uploading and stuff, and, and try to be a little bit better of a content creator. Obviously, I'm never going to hit millions of views or millions of subscribers and stuff, and I'm, I'm cool with that. I fully appreciate even the, like, couple hundred people that, that go out of their way to watch my stuff. It, it It's amazing. And, um, so yeah, I was spending upwards of, like, 500 to 600 bucks a week on Guitar Hero stuff. I bought a Rock Band 4 drum set for th uh, Xbox One. That was like 300 freaking bucks. Um, I bought myself a brand new, oh, new old stock Rock Revolution drum kit because Rock Revolution is my favorite game. Um, okay, I'll say this. It's not my favorite game, but I really love Rock Revolution. I don't think it's a bad game. I think it has all of like four covers that are hard to listen to. But if the OGs remember it, uh, Guitar Hero 1 and 2, even a couple on 3, and definitely a couple on Rock Band 1... Um, were just really bad covers. It wasn't until, like, I mean, Rock, Guitar Hero 3, not so much, because they had some pretty good covers, even though they did mostly master tracks. And, like, 80s also had some really good covers. There's a famous story of where uh, the band that did What I Like About You sued the uh, harmonics, I'm pretty sure, um, over the fact that the song sounded so similar that there was no way it could be a cover. So, you know, stuff like that. But just to point out that people hate on Rock Revolution not realizing the covers in... Guitar Hero 1 and 2 specifically were just, some of them were really trash. Like, Fat Lip, man, ugh, that, that cover is trash. It still brings nostalgia, don't get me wrong, but it's just trash. And, uh, yeah, so I, um, I don't know, I just, I was, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was depressed. I was more just, you know, uh, kind of healing and, and getting through, trying to be more, you know, have some clarity in life and understand how things were going. I was going to therapy and stuff and, and working my job. My job wasn't getting any better, though. Like, I worked there for three years, and it was draining mentally. I think some of part of uh, the stress I had at work I would bring home, which wouldn't aid in any way to my marriage or my relationship with my past partner. And, uh, yeah, it was, just, it was not good, but I also didn't see it in the moment. You know, I, like, kind of just existed, and I was like, oh, I'm getting paid good money to do a job that I love, even if it does bring me a lot of grief. So, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. And, um, yeah, what I want to get to is, like, right around fall to when it started getting really cold out, I just went so gung-ho with the the videos, you know. My memory is still pretty fuzzy from um, just trauma in life in general from when I was a kid to as an adult, like a young adult. Um, I was addicted to spice, uh which some people don't know what that is. It's synthetic marijuana. And I had a pretty debilitating addiction to that. I, would, I don't want to get into it too much, but I'm obviously I'm open about my past, so that was definitely not great for the memory. And then just, you know, always being in survival mode. Uh it it wasn't it wasn't good. So my my memory's still pretty fuzzy, but I'm pretty sure that like when I bought a hobby CNC board, either the end of last year or like the beginning of this year, I re-fell in love with modding guitars. It is 
<laughs> it's my favorite thing to do in the world, really. Besides, like, hang out with my kids and hang out with my friends, making Guitar Hero guitars is, like, so fucking fun. I get so much joy and everything out of it, you know? Um, I need a second to, to uh, get my composure here, but no, like, I, I truly love it. And I know some people um, in the community, especially other modders, not like all of them, but there's a few that they just don't like me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just I, I don't try as hard as them in some things, or I don't like pursue the, the, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't pursue all the things that are, that, can, that are capable. Like I don't make Arduino guitars. I took forever to get on the Wii guitar thing. Um, I don't really converse with them to, to share ideas. Like if they ask me for help. I'm always open arms to help them, but kind of when I ask them for help, they're, no, I wouldn't say shitty, because they're nice, you know, but they're more like, yeah, I'll get back to you on that, and then they never do, and no hard feelings, guys, like, I get it, we all have our own lives, but it just, I like to do things just wholly my own way, I like to, to come up with ideas without any help, I like, I love being a team player, don't get me wrong, but I really love, uh, I just, I don't know, I love having an issue or like a problem or just let's say like just parts like I just have a, a shit ton of parts that's sitting in front of me I'm like how can I make this into something silly how can I do something about this like the fan guitar the whammy pedal like all these things were just like a random thought in my head and like hey why don't I do this why don't I build this you know and uh I've just gotten nothing but love and enjoyment um so I remember my very first ever guitar mod was a kill switch mod and it was pretty simple back in the day it was like all over tutorial sites and stuff and all you did is you rewired your um your select you know the back because we weren't so pervy pervy we weren't privy to using uh select as a star power back then when like the game first came out this is like 06 07 um before 80s came out and, uh, so it, because we didn't use that very much, we just rewired it to be the strum bar. So we made a kill switch strum bar. This was the first mod I ever did. And, um, I did a couple of those for some friends and stuff. And then I would take, like, guitar guts out and put them into, like, we'd get, like, a couple third-party guitars, um, that, like, really just sucked. And then I would, like, rip the neck off and I would glue, like, a SG neck on, because that's all the guitar we had besides the, um, white red octane wireless guitar. And, uh, yeah, you know, just do stuff like that. It was, wouldn't say complicated in any way, very simple stuff. Um, and then, like, about a month before Guitar Hero 3 came out, uh, my brother, who is really big into working on cars and, and doing, like, bodywork and stuff, he made me a double fret guitar using Bondo and all this, and he, you know, sanded it all down, and, and it looked like it was store-bought. And, um, like, so Guitar Hero 3 comes out, and we beat Guitar Hero 3, me, my friend Julian, and my friend KJ, we literally beat Guitar Hero 3 with a double fretted um, <laughs> guitar. It was a black SG that I painted it black, and it had, um, you know, frets in the top, frets in the bottom. And it was just so sick. And my brother made that all himself. Like, he just took some guitars from his friends, because everybody bought the game and everybody played it. And then they kind of like, were like, yeah, it, it's lost its thing, because until Guitar Hero 3. And, like, really, Rock Band came out. It wasn't that popular. Like, yes, people played it and it was known, but it wasn't, like, a very huge thing until, though, like, Rock Band and Guitar Hero 3 came out. Then people were more into it. So there was a good window there where everybody had these guitars and they were just more or less, like, giving them to me. I remember I had an old iPod that, uh, it barely worked, but it was an 8-gig iPod, like an iPod Nano. I think first-gen, because it had the silver chrome back. And I traded one of my friends two guitars, a PlayStation 2, and Guitar Hero 1 and 2 for it. Even though I already had guitars, a PlayStation 2, and Guitar Hero, I was like, dude, this is a great steal for me. Like, I got a slim PS2, two, like a red and a black guitar, and both games. I was like, yeah, I don't even use this iPod. Um, lost my train of thought there. But yeah, so um, made that, and with that double fret uh, guitar... Um, I thought it would be really cool to have a headless guitar, like, take the headstock off. So I cut the headstock off, but I never, like, filled it in or nothing. It was just an empty top, you know. But it, you know, it was my main guitar. I played with it all the time. Had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, I remember the day that I beat 
through the fire and the flames for the first time, and I had to t kind of cheat. We did this rubber band trick where you would just put a piece of or piece. You'd put a rubber band on the green button, and then you would just spam the crap out of all the other ones. And I remember there was like the the intro was like truly the only thing besides like cl close to the end of the solo that I would fail at. So the day that I passed it, I believe I got four stars. My first time ever passing through the fire and the flames. Just as I got four stars the first time I passed Jordan, um, I threw the guitar down on the floor because I was so excited. Well, my carpet in my living room grabbed the open part of the head and it ripped the neck clear off where the, it was met at the the bottom where the second set of frets was. Because it wasn't very strong, you know, it was just Bondo holding it all together. It was pretty flimsy and like, man, I can't tell you how crushed I was. More that like, I broke such an awesome guitar that everyone loved playing. But also that, like, my brother worked really hard on it. He spent a whole weekend just out of the kindness of his heart to build me a guitar, you know. And, uh, so I felt really bad about that. And I didn't think much, like, I felt bad about it. And then I just moved on. I mean, I had probably, like, five guitars at that time. So I was like, whatever. I always tried to fix it, but it just sat by the wayside. And then one day I just threw it in the garbage, you know. I was like, it'll never get fixed. Wish I still had it so I could have fixed it. But, you know, it's that's, what, 16? Uh, well, that'd be 15 years ago now, um... But no, I'll say that's like 14 and a half years because obviously I didn't beat Through the Fire and the Flames until like six months after the game came out. And right around that time, um, Rock Band had come out and my friend had gotten it. His mom bought it for him with her tax return. He, she got like the whole bundle for uh, PS3 and she bought an extra guitar for him. And I remember the, just not knowing this was possible, but I took the guitar apart one day because the strum bar broke. And weirdly enough, my dad had these Mercury switches at work that were basically the same thing. And uh, I just kind of modified the strum bar to work with Mercury switches versus the magnetic style, you know? And uh, when I had the guitar apart, I noticed that the uh, the neck, the, the cable lengths were the same, whether it was going to the bottom solo frets or to the top. And I also noticed that the circuit boards were the same size. And I was like, I bet you, if I just swap these, it'll work perfectly. So I swap them, and the the everything's backwards. Like green is orange, orange is green. You know, on both of them. So it's like, well, that is a failed mod. But let me try something. So I t unplugged it from the board, and I just flipped it 180, and I plugged it back into the board. And for some reason, however the ground or like the common works, it just didn't matter. And when I flipped it around, both both sets worked perfectly so i was able to have solo frets at the top and then just regular frets at the bottom and no one played with the solo frets because they were just small and you know it was it was more of just a cool feature to mess around with but we were more playing for skill than doing it for fun so we didn't use it but i figured why not at least have like the ability to not strum on the upper fret or upper frets and that was honestly a lot of fun um I don't know, I just, I enjoyed it thoroughly for some reason. I enjoyed working on guitars. And I remember, like, when I wasn't there, my buddy Julian that I mentioned and one of our other friends, Mark, had taken a Les Paul apart and an SG and, like, morphed them together. I think they took the um, the guts out of a 360 Les Paul, they put it into an SG, and then they put they couldn't figure out how to get the neck to work, so they just glued the neck on. And, like, I was so overly critical, and I was a piece of shit about it. And I was like, yeah, this sucks, guys. It's awful. Because I was not that other people weren't already modding guitars. I mean, by this point, there was the double neck guitar, like the famous pizza dancing guy. I think Freddie W. or somebody along those lines made it. Um, which makes me question if it was real, because he's an expert at video editing. But I would assume that, it, from what I remember, it was real. And, uh, I don't know, I was just so butthurt. I was like, no, I'm the guitar hero modder guy. Like, nobody else should be, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I was really upset about that. And then, you know, years had passed, and I had modded some stuff here and there. More just, like, more just guts. Like, at that point, there was enough guitars out there between the Kramer, the Les Paul, the third-party guitars, the SGs, all that, that I just wanted to, like, make, um, and I also started playing Guitar Hero 3 on PC, Back then, our PC specs were pretty awful, and even on, like, a super high-end computer, Guitar Hero 3 still required, like, 
um, eat, like really good optimization to, to work right. Like I remember my friend had like a four thousand dollar desktop because his dad was a computer IT guy and he like would always just buy him the like the best graphics cards, the best everything. Like he had like sixteen gigs of RAM back in oh seven, which was so unheard of back then, you know. And like I remember his computer struggled to run GH3, so we did all these, like, um, zone mods and stuff, and then got rid of all the animations and the flames, just everything, you know, and so when we figured that out, I was able to play it on my computer, because it was at least optimized enough to where I could play it at, like, 25 FPS, which, not the greatest, but hey, it's customs, you know, and it's better than Frets and Fire that didn't have Lefty Flip for the longest time, which is actually where I learned how to play Guitar Hero without Lefty Flip is playing Fretz on Fire because I was like, I'm going to play customs regardless of how good it is. I just want to play custom songs. Um, but yeah, anyway, so um, I really liked the idea that 360 was just, it's Microsoft, right? So it works flawlessly on um, PC. So I was like, well, I like the SGs, especially being a Lefty. Explorers, the neck is awesome, but I mean, it's not, but whoever, in, uh, not invented, but whoever created the um, Explorer guitar for Guitar Hero must have literally been like, we know there's lefties out there. Let's make sure they literally are the most uncomfortable playing this guitar because it's just not shaped at all. Like unless you're standing, and I'm a sit down player, it is not shaped at all for a lefty, and it's kind of shitty, you know. So I was like, well, I'm gonna rip the guts out of these and I'm gonna put them into an SG because even though we had the adapters um, for PC, like PS2 to PC, it just it wasn't, um, uh, it either didn't work or, like, it wasn't, I know it for sure it didn't work in Guitar Hero 3, but even with, like, x Patter and Joy to Key and stuff like that that we had at the time, um, it just, it wasn't the same, and it was input lag, you know. So, uh, I just loved the idea of doing that. And then, um, I started making lefty guitars, and back then I made, like, really crude lefty guitars, like, I literally just, like, cut the whammy bar spot out of the body, I cut a hole into the other side, glued it in, and then I put a sticker over the hole that I cut where it originally was. And I still have a YouTube video up um, from, like, way back when of uh, me showing my lefty guitar off that I made. And I do believe I had another one where I took, like, the black strum bar off an Explorer and black um, start and select off a of Les Paul, and I made, like, a black and a red, like, black faceplate, black accents and everything. And I even took... 360 LP frets and I shade dude, I spent like three hours in my garage at like 15 sanding and filing down these frets just so they would fit perfectly in the SG before I knew that we would have fit just fine with some modification but not three hours worth of modifying you know or modifying um so yeah then I just I st still built stuff here and there um but not so much, you know, especially Guitar Hero fell off, and I probably didn't play from, like, 11 to, I want to say 13 or 14, which may seem not that long. But in the realm of, like, not playing, and other people can attest to this, there's a point when you go, like, oh, I'm not going to play anymore, and then a year goes by, a year and a half, two years, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm just, I'm done, and I'm never going to play again. And then one day I just started playing again, you know, especially I had a new laptop in, like, 15... Uh, early four, or late 14, early 15, I had a new laptop, and, uh, had some downtime off work. Ugh, excuse me. And, uh, and, uh, so, yeah, I started playing customs again, and then I was like, well, I need to make a proper guitar, and I'm actually looking at it right now. I made this, um, I know that would have been later, so, yeah, my, my memory is fuzzy. That was, I didn't buy this guitar until, like, 2016, 17. But, no, I remember I made a Les Paul... Um, into an SG, and it was wireless and all, and I just put some, like, momentary push buttons as, like, the guide and the connect and all that, and I left all the board, boards inside of it. Um, and I do have... I'm going to round back to, like, how I'm doing now. I, obviously, I don't want to go 15 whole years into the past and then not get back to where I am. So, yeah, um, then I gradually started making more and more. As some people have seen, I started doing, like, body modifications. When I learned how to bondo and do really smooth body work, that's when, like, shit was just over. And I, I just specialize in body mods because even though it's super tedious and, like, I take a giant hit on, like, financially speaking, on um, my work mainly because, I mean, pr pr pretty much this. 
I take a giant hit on my work because if I log 50 hours to a, a job and like let's say just base number 25 bucks an hour there's no way I'm charging anybody that much money let's say even 10 bucks an hour I'm not gonna charge 250 bucks just for my labor you know so I basically don't ever charge for labor it's more of a passion project as I said I love love making guitar hero guitars and I love making things strictly just like the body mod of it like yeah I'm an electrician by trade I build fully automated machines that make some really crazy awesome stuff and I think I'm really good at electrical um, not so great at programming so that's probably why I'm like scared of the Arduino projects and stuff but uh, I can know enough electrical to get by with this, the smaller boards and stuff even though I'm more of like a electrician electrician um, I'm really good at soldering. I've got nothing but accolades. Like, so I've had some bosses that are the biggest assholes in the world and never give me a compliment or anything. And then they see me solder something, they're like, damn, like, you know how to solder, dude. Like, what the heck? Like, you should go, like, teach people how to solder, you know? And I, I've even seen some comments recently where people are they're telling me that they also agree to that, you know, to an extent. So, you know, if, if I am good at certain things, I just push for that. Like, I... I'm weird about change, even though it took a lot of changing over the years to get where I am. I'm at a point where I'm super comfortable where, where I am with my skills, and I just love doing that. Like, I love making lefty guitars, because I'm a lefty, but also, like, they don't make lefty guitars, you know? So, I love making lefty guitars. I've made, like, four or five professional done, like, besides back in the day when I made a couple, I've, I've made, like, four to five... Um, I think I've made four commissioned, and I have one personally right now, so they're few and far between, don't get me wrong, but I'd love to keep on making more. Um, and then it kind of just leads us into, like, more today, you know, like, I I built, like, that double strum guitar that I just posted about and stuff and uh, all that, but this last year has been very rewarding for me, um, for my building, like, I was just telling my best friend about it, how it seems silly to some when I'm telling him, like, yeah, I turned 30 November 5th, and I still, I don't, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't consider that I play Guitar Hero. Obviously, I play Guitar Hero, but I play more just to test, and, like, if my friends are over, we have, you know, a couple hours of some fun, so I don't not play, but I'm not an avid player as I used to be. I'm just a builder now, but even then, it's like, you're like, oh, you build Guitar Hero? You build toys for people? That's, that's silly. And it's like, yeah, it may be silly, but I get so much satisfaction and joy out of it it's, it's a lot of fun it's um like i said next to my children being just total rock stars i get the most enjoyment out of my job being you know i take my profession very seriously and i and i push to always be the better than i was yesterday at my job so i i love making guitar hero guitars and uh this last year has just been super great um probably the happiest i've ever been <laughs> it's a little sad to say, but I think I'm the happiest I've ever been in in all my life. Uh, I don't remember being this happy as a kid. I don't remember being this happy as a teenager. Um, even when my kids were young, like I I was very joyful around them, and and I was you know, but I, there was this underlying misery that's just like like just carry around fifty pounds of bricks in a backpack all day, and then tell me how you feel. You know, I I hate to use like a silly metaphor like that, but um, misery and depression, it sucks, it, it really sucks, so being out of it, like, yeah, I'm tearing up and kind of crying, but, man, I'm, I am fucking happy, and, and the, the tears are, like, I guess, a little bit of realization that I wasn't happy for a long time, but also, like, pride and, and, and just, I don't know, it's hard to, to describe, it's, it's very emotional, um, talking about my past, because it sucked, it, it was awful, I wasn't a good person. Um, I, in, in the thick of it, I promised, like, five people that I'd build them guitars, and I just never finished them, which, now that we're talking about it, um, I, by the end of this year, I actually hope to finish uh, these guitars that I started. You know, I built um, a 360 SG for Alec that I'm, like, literally just have to finish painting it and figure out how to get the faceplate to sit right with all the layers of paint, but I'll just basically sand it down i built a guitar for um d royal or drew uh he may not go by d royal anymore that's just what i remember him as um but drew uh man i'm sorry that i can't remember his last name right now my brain is mush but i built him a 360 wireless uh explorer there was another person 
PS3 Harrison um, Alice uh, that I made a wireless 360 SG for with double frets. Um, Abby, who is super popular in the community, I made... I just basically promised him that I would give him a guitar, and then I just never did. I, it was already built and all, and then I wound up giving it to somebody else because I figured Abby hates my guts over it because um, I never gave it to him. And then the worst of them all... Because all these other people hadn't paid me money or nothing. I was doing it more out of the kindness of my heart. And, and like, even if I wanted to get paid, I wasn't going to take any money till I was finished with it. So, uh, I, uh, the worst one is, though, Friff. Frost, Ryan. I built him a guitar. And because I'm a lefty in my playtesting, I didn't know that it was overstrumming. Because um, obviously, I, when my downstrum is your guys' upstrum. So, literally, the first thing that he does when he goes to test it out is he starts drumming and it starts over strumming and I was crushed I was so upset because he had paid me good money for it like I actually charged him and he paid me good money for it and um then I was like you know what man I feel really bad obviously you paid for it and he didn't want to ship it back for some reason he just didn't want to ship it back to me to fix it and I was like here's what I'll do I'll sell you um or I'll give you another guitar you just pay the shipping send me 35 bucks so he sent me the 35 bucks, and then I just, n to this day, never sent him a guitar. N I haven't contacted him or anything. I'm sure he remembers it. I'm sure he doesn't, like, think about it a lot, but I'm sure he remembers it. Who doesn't remember things like that, you know? And I feel, like, bad because that's not who I am. It's not who I want to be. I want to be a dude who, like, gets nothing but respect, who everybody loves, who people think are, like, very highly of, you know? Um... So it breaks my heart that, like, I have more or less, specifically Ryan, I've more or less screwed people over, or, or I've, you know, to the rest of them, I've over-promised and, un and never delivered. So it's like, I'm at a great place now where I, I'm looking at these guitars, like, right in front of me, and it's like, they're here. Um, when I get the commissions that I currently have on my plate done, like, these are my next things besides that double um, body guitar that I've actually been working on lately. So, you know, um... For anyone who's still listening, like, yeah, I'm all over the place, and I'm rambling, and I'm sure it's sad to, to listen to me talk about my past and my feelings and stuff. But, you know, like, I don't know. I just, I love you guys. Like, I love the appreciation that I get. I love that I've been able to grow my channel in a significant way. Um, even though it's only, like, 150 subs, um, the consistency that I've had, even though it's sporadic consistency, at least I'm trying to be as, like, hey, like, every two to three weeks, like, you gotta get a video up, I'm trying to make them quality, I'm trying to put some really big effort into it, like, even this video here that I'm watching that I haven't talked about this whole time, because it's pretty self-explanatory, you take guts out of one guitar, you put them in another guitar, um, it, it's like, I edited the crap out of this, I made sure that of the hour and a half footage that I had, I condensed it down as much as I could to be, you know, I mean, it's 38 minutes total, but it's still condensed down to what I think is great. And, like, if you really wanted, you could totally just mute this video and watch or listen to something and watch this, you know. Um, no hard feelings, you know, like, it's... I just... I was in a mood. Um, I got laid off. Or I wouldn't say I got laid off. Uh, a contract that I was on did not get picked up, and so I, you know, more or less was laid off. And uh, I've had this whole week off. And all of last week. So I've been able to work on a whole bunch of stuff. I've been able to edit a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm just in this mood where it's like, I think finally now, sitting down today, I was able to, to truly breathe. Like, yeah, I mean, this whole, pet since the beginning of summer, I have had the greatest year of my entire life. But sitting here today, I was more like, this is the shit. Like, I'm not upset at all about not having a job at the moment. I mean, I thankfully already have another opportunity coming up in a couple weeks so i have um at least more time to work on some stuff you know at least more free time than i would usually have in the nights and weekends that i don't have the kids uh, excuse me but i'm just fucking happy guys like i appreciate all of you and and it, it's it's been a lot of fun this whole past year has been nothing but fun and uh in a weird way like Losing my best friend Julian, who I didn't mention, but yeah, Julian passed away last February um, in a car accident. Who, that's the dude who got me into Guitar Hero. Like, that's the dude who I didn't even know. And he was, we were in computer class in eighth grade, man. And he was showing me how to get proxies and stuff on computers and, like, how to watch YouTube at school in 2006. It was, like, October of 2006. I was only, I was barely 14. I was still 13. I hadn't turned 
14 yet. And uh, this dude invited me over to his house, and I get there, and he's playing Guitar Hero, like, with a black... I think two hadn't come out yet when I first met him. So there we are in his room the day I meet him, and uh, he's playing on his guitar. I'm playing with a controller because he showed me how to set it all up, like, how to, you know, the button presses and stuff. And uh, we just formed a really crazy bond and became best friends, and, and uh, it, it really hurt losing him. And then losing my, my wife, well, more or less separating from my wife. I don't like to, to use the, the term losing in that regard, because um, it, it kind of speaks of, like, ownership and stuff, and that's just not right. But, uh, yeah, so um, I uh, I just really, really had a hard time between basically losing two of my best friends that, oh, I don't know, uh, I said this the other day on Facebook that somehow my, my buddy Julian passing away gave me the opportunity to truly live, and, and I, I mean that wholeheartedly, that as morbid as it sounds, sometimes it takes the worst tragedies ever, um, and the, the adversity of the tragedy for you to go like, hey, this isn't, um... I shouldn't look at this in a negative way. Like, I could regress, and I could be more depressed than ever. I could do less than ever. I could be all this. But my main focus was my kids. I was like, I need to be strong for them, or else I'm not going to have a good relationship with them, first of all, because I'm going to be old. Dad's always bitter and, and not happy, and we don't play or do anything. So it's like, cannot be that way. I got to be having fun with my kids. Got to get on the floor and play with them. If they want me to watch something, you know, I got to watch with all. Like, I got to just put full effort into my children, because they're ultimately number one. And then when I have all this downtime, it's like, well, I'm going to put effort into the things that I truly love, like my job and my, my hobby, which obviously my hobby is building Guitar Hero guitars and, and all that nonsense, you know. And uh, so, yeah, it's just it took a giant tragedy for me to realize that um, I needed to be good in life. Like it was a good wake up call, if you will, to just be like, hey, man, like, you know what it was? Life and the world basically took the the giant hand from Jackass and just bitch slapped me across the face as hard as it possibly could and was like, hey, dude, wake up. Like, stop being in denial. Stop sulking about it. Like, you're the master of your own fate and you can control if you are enjoying your ride or not. Like, yeah, ultimately, sometimes it's out of your control. Like, like you can't control your emotions, right? But you can control how you react to your emotions. You can control how your emotions affect other people and all that. So, you know, with that being said, I'm sorry that I'm all rambly and all over the place. But I wanted to get another video out there and I've been sitting on this footage for a while. And I just realized when I was editing it, I was like, there's no way I can talk about the build for the entire 40 minutes of the video, you know. Um, but I fucking appreciate all of you guys. The, the young, the old, the people that have been with me for... I mean, I see some comments. I'm gonna mute this. I see some comments from people that have been subscribed to me for like eight years now, man. It's awesome. And then I know some people like... Uh, I'm, I won't name names because I don't can't guarantee it. Obviously, I can only see what I see. But I see people that like are pretty big names that they watch my stuff, you know. And it's just... it It only gives me more drive to do even better. And uh, make more stuff, you know? Like, I, I hate to put all my my sanity on others, but you guys have really helped me um, see my worth and see that I'm a valuable person, and I like that. So, uh, with that said, guys, uh, I do apologize for the somber sadness of it all, but you're all rock stars in my eyes. I appreciate you, and um, let's go to test this thing. It'll be a separate video tomorrow, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll show you how good this thing plays. Peace.